What's up guys, Parker here. I have an awesome video for you today showing you how to identify your best and worst sales period within your data. So if you take a quick look at what we have on the screen here, you see uh, my sales uh, graph by date and you see this green section which is my best sales period of my data and this red section which is signifying the worst sales period. And this is specifically the worst and best 30 day period. So if I want to say, hey, show me my best 90 day period, I'll type in 90 uh, and it shows you the best and worst sales period that grows uh, based on whatever period that you're talking about. And this is dynamic based on any slicers that you have in your data. So in case now I want to show the best seven day period as we have a smaller range of data, that is my best and worst seven day period, which sometimes it's a little bit surprising because it doesn't always include your best day of sales. It's just your actual like seven day period um, that matters. So I'm going to show you how to set this up. This is awesome because it's totally dynamic to whatever period selection you want to choose. Um, so let's go ahead and set this up in another file. So in this other file, I have basically just the sales by date already graphed here. So we're going to have to write a little bit of DAX to make this happen. Um, so let's go ahead and start with a couple early steps. So let's go ahead and create a measures table by going to enter data and creating a measures table and load that in. And once that's loaded, we can create our first measure. And this is gonna be a measure to calculate the last X number of days sales. Uh, we're gonna hard code that to three days just in the beginning. So we'll type in last X days sales. And we're gonna set that equal to firstly a variable. Um, we're gonna call this var period, oh, caps lock var period selection. And in the future, this is gonna be dynamic to our what if parameter, but we're gonna set this equal to three right now to make it the last three days of sales. Then we're gonna create another variable called lowest date. And what this is, is it's going to be the smallest date in our period. So on this graph, it's going to be this June 16th. So let's go ahead and grab it. Um, we're gonna type in calculate min sales date. all selected sales date. So it's removing the filters on sales date and just grabbing the minimum sales date. So let's go ahead and return this, turn lowest date. Um, and let's go ahead and turn this into a table so we can uh, visualize it pretty easily. So let's throw in last X day of sales and you see that it returns always June 16th, no matter what day you are on in the table, it's gonna return that lowest date. So getting closer, let's go ahead and create another variable. We're gonna set this equal to current date, and really that's just max of sales date. And to show you what that does, is it returns whatever date we're on in the table. So you see that when it's June 18th, it returns June 18th, that's all it does. So we are going to use both those dates to calculate uh, the first date we want to use in our three day sales period. So var, we'll call that previous date equals current date minus period selection. We'll return previous date. And we see that now it's always just returning three days prior to the current date. So that's pretty much all we need there. And just a note, we are gonna use lowest date in just a second. Um, so let's go ahead and continue on here. So our actual results, our actual three day sales is gonna be calculated using the following formula. So we type in calculate, we need to sum the sales, but specifically we need to filter the table we're on using all selected so it gets rid of those sales, uh, the uh, filters on the sales table. And specifically, we're gonna set those uh, filters for the date where it's greater than or equal to previous date. Previous date. And we want our sales date to be less than or equal to current date. And that's all we need. So let's go ahead and return our result variable and now you see um, the previous three days sales in this column 
So on the first day, you see that it, there's only one day of data, so it can only use that value. On the second day, it's calculating uh, the current day plus the day before. And on the third day, it's calculating the current day plus the day before plus the day before. And actually the fourth day, it's actually calculating um, the current day plus the previous three because we have one extra um, equal to in here. We actually want this one to be greater than, not greater than or equal to. So now it's calculating uh, the three days, including the day that you're on and the two before. So you see that right there. So that's pretty cool. Getting closer, let's go ahead and make this dynamic to um, a period selection. So let's go ahead and go to modeling, create a what if parameter, and we're gonna call this period. And for our purposes, let's make the maximum 180, minimum is one on a scale uh, whole numbers by one. Go ahead and click OK. And now we have our little slider down here. So we can make this whatever we want. So on 17, we need to add this to our measure. So instead of period selection being three, we just need to set this equal to period values. So now uh, whatever you select is going to influence your uh, calculations here. So if I wanted a nine day period, oh, see what I got going on here. Period selection value period. So it's still, oh, sorry. Ew, I just wasn't visualizing it correctly. Um, so five day period, it uh, looked like that, 10. So it is changing. Okay, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and create two more measures here, uh, which are basically gonna be the exact same. Um, we are going to create a max last X days. And this is going to be a lot of the same here. So var period selection. equals period value and then var max sales we need to calculate the max sales for the period so if we want to uh, do that we use the max x functions function we're going to iterate over all selected sales date and we're going to take the max based on the measure we had previously made so let's go ahead and return that So let's go ahead and return this max last X days. So what it's doing is it's going through all of these values and looking for the maximum value. So that's kind of getting us halfway. From there, we need to figure out what days are actually calculating uh, in this max value. So let's go ahead and do that. So instead of that, we want to return uh, max date. We'll set that equal to calculate max sales date but we're going to filter the all selected uh, sales date where last x day sales equals max sales and we'll go ahead and return max date so now it's returning uh, april 7th 2015 for every row in our data so let's go ahead and run through that real quick of what we're doing. We're returning the max sales date where the measure equals the max sales that we calculated. So when we calculate the max measure that's calculated on our table, we need to then look for the date um, of which the measure would actually calculate that max value. So let's go ahead and look at uh, April 7th, 2015. So we're in 2013 here. Let's go ahead and go to 2015. 2014 a little bit more. So here is April 7th, 2015. And we see that the last X day sales is this 985609. So that's our max value of our data. Um, so final step here, let's go ahead and add one more variable. We're gonna call this final. We need to calculate the sum of sales, but we're gonna filter the sales table to where um, the sales date is greater than or equal to max date minus the period selection 
and oh and I just need to make this greater than before I mess that up and we want sales date to be less than or equal to max date and that's our entire measure so let's go ahead and return final and see what that uh, comes up with so you see that it returns blank for everything except our max period um, that's what's going to allow you to create that moving line chart over the original line chart so since it's blank everywhere else and only showing you the period that has that max data this is going to be dynamic to um, uh, to our selection here so let's go ahead and oh we see data right there so this is our, actually our max 24 day period so in order to see this better let's go ahead and move this over to a line chart so in a line chart we need to get rid of some things let's get rid of uh, let's get rid of that so now we have date and sales let's go ahead and grab uh, max last X day sales and we are going to make that a different color let's make that bright green so now that is our max sales period not too hard to set up and again dynamic to the period that we select uh, we can do the exact same thing with the minimum so let's just go ahead and copy create a new measure paste that in and we'll call this min last X days the difference here is we can just replace max with min so instead of max X it's min X max date it's going to be min date using the min function uh, min sales and change a couple more places so min date and min date and there you go so go ahead and click enter let's throw that in our graph as well oh we've got one problem here I think I'm changed the color back Oh, I selected it. All right, there we go. Um, let's go ahead and bring min last X days in. And we're going to make that red. And we see one point here. So we have one more step that we have to do to make this usable. Because the minimum value is always going to be that first day's value. That's going to be, since it's only one day of data, it's going to be your min period. Um, so we need to do one more step actually in our original last X day sales measure. So the reason we calculated lowest date was because we want to be able to see um, basically uh, if there are the number of period days in your actual selection. Um, so our extra step is instead of just calculating current date like this, we're going to create an if statement. Uh, we're going to say under current date if uh, max sales date is greater than or equal to lowest date plus period selection we want to return max sales date otherwise return blank so this is going to change our measure to only really care if there are at least the number of selected days in our period so really this black section here is the section with the number of days that are less than this 61 so we can see the shift over if we select a bigger period so if we select 100 um, we can see that it's only going to care about if there is an actual 100 day period within your data so it's not going to be biased by hey it's um, the low like the lowest day um, only isn't going to be your lowest 100 day period because that wouldn't really make sense so that's our entire measure and it's completely dynamic to whatever you select here you can change the date range you can change other slicers and you'll still have a usable model here so i hope you enjoyed this video i thought this was a really cool trick and a really unique way to show your best and worst periods within your data um, it seems to work really well and it's also very fast so give it a try let me know what you think of this trick and i will see you in the next video